We play and call it work. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargamer.com with Matthew from MiniWargamer.com. <laughs> and we're doing another Tau review video. This time it's the XV95 Ghost Kill Battlesuits. Ooh. Oh, oh, Dave knows Tau. Uh, uh, Are you mouthwash. Okay? Are you... <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, need a, I need something here. Ridiculousness. You know, so. a lot of people have been big time requesting Chaos versus Tau with you versus Yes, me. I know. I saw it. So yes. maybe, just maybe. Mayhaps. You're going to see that soon. Actually, I really want to. We should just do it. Okay. Like soon. Okay. When everything is out, we'll do one. When everything is out? Well, yeah, because there's still another wave of releases next week. And that's an unfortunate thing. I think that'll be it, though. So we'll see. It's Either way. There's one thing I want to talk about before we talk about the ghost kill. Uh, I just want to talk about the upcoming rumors. The Obviously, it's not a rumor of what's coming out for next week. We have the new Tau Terrain, which can move, which is really weird. <laughs> see how that actually plays, though, because it can't move past other terrain, so it kind of will get stuck, especially with the way we set up terrain. We set up a lot of it. Yes. Put that aside for a second. One thing that I've heard is that the Tau aren't really going to get a new codex. That it's more like this is their update, is just adding new stuff. Kind of like when the Tyranids got those new units, like the Toxicrine and the Maliceptor and the... You know, I got medicine for that, so just by the way. That's... Yeah, yeah, and the new um, Neurothropes. All of that didn't... <laughs> They didn't update the tier in a codex, okay. is what I'm trying to say. They came up yeah, with yeah. a supplement. New supplements and new models, models. And yeah. So same thing here with Tau? Maybe. That's the rumors. I find it odd, but it totally could be possible. The Tau themselves don't need a huge update. Their rules are fine. Mm -hmm. They just needed more variety. There's a few things in the Tau codex that I prefer would have been updated. like the Such as? The Vespids, the Crute, those secondary things. And the things that aren't as good? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the problem with that. I like internal balance. I like to be able to bring almost anything from the Codex. Yes. And have fun with it. Do you have fun with Crute? Crute, not really. Why? Too squishy? Well, the Crute are okay, because you can just, they're cheap, and so you can kind of throw them up there as a meat shield. But the Vespids, they're too they are too overpowered, or the, too overcosted for what they do. The wing guys? Yeah, they fly around, yeah. and they fire strength 5 AP3 guns. You think that would be great, but they're not. They're only- blitzed. How is that not good? Because they're- it sounds amazing. They're expensive. Like, okay. comparatively? Yeah. And so it's always better to bring something else. And even if you're not power gaming, it's hard to bring the stuff that's really, really weak. Unless you're playing Necrons, in which case you want to do that just to bring them down to everybody else's level. Yeah, or but Eldar's Necrons level. are Necrons, and yeah. no one plays Necrons if they want to have friends in life. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't know if that rumor is true. I hope it's not. I hope the Tau get an update because, well, for one thing, the Fire Warriors are getting updated. So it seems strange that the Codex would remain the same when a core unit has actually been updated. Like We already have the White Dwarf for it with the rules. So we'll just have to wait and see. But that's the rumor. Just wanted to let you know that. Um, but we're talking about these today. The Ghost Keel Battle Suits. And what they're capable of. There's basically... It's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how these work. I'm interested to see uh, how well their faces explode by the uh, weapons that I'll shoot at them. They seem well priced for what they can do. Maybe even a little too cheap. 130 points each. That comes with the two stealth drones. Did you uh, say they're too cheap for what they can do? I think so. But we'll have to kind of wait and see. Uh, you can bring them in squads of up to three. They're jetpack monstrous creatures. So That must be nice. I, I just, I've given up on the idea of a difference between vehicles and monstrous creatures, so I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Except that it's clear that Games Workshop no longer believes in walkers, except like dreadnoughts. Yes, I and know. That's about it. Deffy tells me all about it, I know. Yeah, like even Deffy and the Soul Grinder should be turned into a, a monstrous creature. <clears throat> and you know what? I No, they should. Yes, I know. And I, I agree with making these monstrous creatures because I don't think there should be a difference between the vehicles, and I know I'm now talking about it. But it's I think right. they should get rid of the vehicle rules altogether and just make vehicles like monstrous creatures. Not identical, because, you know, giving them smash and all that stuff doesn't always make sense. But uh, the problem is with one melted gun, you could destroy a massive vehicle. Right. The whole game would have to be redone. Whereas this is like one melta, okay, one wound, big deal. Yeah, Maybe. It's, it's got four wounds. Unless they make the cover safe. You're gonna have it's toughness five, so you have to hit it with strength ten to insta kill it. Unless you bring in force weapons or other insta killing things, but or destroyer weapons, but you know. Yeah, I, yeah. You're gonna have bigger fish to fry with destroyer weapons. Than these <laughs> I saw what you did there. I know, right? Pretty good. Yeah. So let's walk through what they can do. The, I think the biggest thing that people are talking about is their stealth capabilities. Yeah, they're uh, what? They have stealth and like as they their do. war gear. Yeah, they not, do. Not the drones. The not big the drones. dudes, the XP95s. 
Which is what? What are they going to? The ghost kills. That's what people are going to call them. Yeah, we'll call them ghost kills. Okay, I'd like to, to scrape this off of my heel. <laughs> ghost kill. So they have stealth. The drones don't technically have stealth, but they have a special rule that says any units that they're part of gain stealth. So they are part of their own unit, so they technically have stealth, but it's an important distinction that they don't come with stealth, because it says if the model already has stealth, it then gains shrouded. So it's an interesting dynamic that we have part of the unit has stealth, and the other part has stealth and shrouded. Yeah. Like, what do you put out front? Do you put out your squishy drones that, at least if they die, who cares? You've still got your bigger guys? I would say yes. Or do you, but then you lose shrouded. Yeah, but it, they have the guns though, like who cares? But if they die, you lose your shrouded, and you're no longer survivable. You have stealth. Or maybe you have like one in the back. But you, your armor's three though, you gotta remember that too. Yeah, the guys, yeah, but there's a lot of AP3 and AP2 and AP1 out there. There is, but, weapons but are... you, what would you rather have? Like stealth and guys that don't exist anymore because they're out front and they get shot first? Or uh, a blade of wounds? I think I'd do a little bit of both. I, I think I'd keep a couple behind. And that way you have some ablative wounds, but you don't lose your... Oh, I see. Yeah, I kind of get the best of both worlds there. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that would... You, know, you notice that you just had to center that, right? That's true, yeah. Yeah, my OCD's killing me. Why, why'd you move it like that? Because the Grav Centurions are over there. So I'm uh, going to put them all in front yes. of the Grav Centurions. I see, yeah. So if there's guys right there and they're shooting, then that make it to sand. Interesting thing that just came to my mind. What? Grav Centurions go based off of your armor save, right? Mm hmm There's two types of armor saves in here. The drones have four plus, and the ghost kills have three plus. So they're all one unit, right? Yeah. So the, since the drones outnumber the ghost kills, you actually go based off the four plus. Majority. So this thing is like an anti-grav centurion. Oh. Except their weapons really aren't super... Are you sure about that? Yeah. 100%. Well, it's not clear in the rules, but most tournaments will rule it that way. Yeah. That you go on majority armor save. It makes sense. It falls with the other like majority toughness, majority yeah. the, the tricky thing is when you get equal amounts, like if there was three drones and three guys, do you go with the four plus or the three plus? Probably the better one. The it's well since you go with the better toughness, you think you would go with the worst armor save, the thing that'll keep them alive the longest. Right, so which you, is you the, the better plus. one in that case if Centurions are firing at it. It's the four plus. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that, but that could be debated. But still, it does create because Centurion. We're talking about Centurion grab or grab Centurions because they are very prevalent in taking out big stuff like this. Prevalent. Prevalent. That's what I would say, but... Tomato, tomato? I don't judge. Ghost kill or ghost kill. <laughs> <laughs> but then they have, not only do they have stealth and shrouded on these guys. Because of these. Because of these. But they have a special rule, which is called... Because stealth and shroud is not special. Holo, photon, no, that's not the one. It's the ghost kill electro warfare suite. <laughs> it's a funny name. But and they can download Windows 10 while they're at it. Yeah, for free. It's a free upgrade, it's not a trial version. <laughs> Jeez, oh, what's it called? <laughs> Ghost Kill Electro Warfare Suite. All right. You remember what that does? Uh, I think Quiz. it doubles their uh, cover save. Yes, okay. specifically from Stealth and Shrouded. That's an important mm. distinction because let's, and it's only on, it's only on them, right? Yeah, it's only only on the- Only on the- oh, No, you know what, it just says War Gear. Okay, so here's the scenario, okay? You take out the drones. So, what's their cover say? Out in the open? Yeah. It's just stealth. So they have a six plus. And if they're more than 12 inches away, they become a five plus. Because it's doubled? If they're more, yeah, because of the ghost kill okay. after warfare sweep. Let's say one drone's alive. What's their cover say? Their cover say would become a two plus more than 12 inches away. Because they gain shrouded. So that makes and that's four doubled. plus. And you double the stealth of shrouded. What if, what if only the drones are, oh, it's these guys with the rule. Yeah, they have so, the ghost okay. kill rule. If the, only the drones are alive, they have stealth. Okay. And nothing else. So. In nothing but. Yeah. Now, some people think, well, but they're, all their weapons are short range. And so, how often are they going to be able to stay away from that 12 inch range? You know, that's true too. What, what's the max? Is like 18 inches their max? Well, they have gun? a 24 inch with their cyclic ion raker. It's like this one. You can see it all the way back. Yeah, there. I got some leaves in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be really good. <laughs> that's how they do their lawns. Oh, man. But uh, that was 24 inch range. So, that's fine. And if you throw the burst cannons on their back, those are only 18 inch range. I, I should go to school with burst cannons on my back, you know, I think that makes me popular. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at 18 to 24 inch range, essentially. Uh huh. But. Yeah, that's short range, yeah. But they have jetpack. Because they're just show offs like that. And that's kind of annoying because in the assault phase, they can move 2d6 inches away. Even if they deep strike, or ran, or shot, they can just move up 
use their weapons, get out of there. And we know that because you looked it up before the video. I did. I made sure because I couldn't remember if deep striking you're allowed to assault move away, but so you are. He can be at the 12 inch mark, fire his weapon. Or 18 inch mark. Or 18, yeah. because that's actually what it is. The yeah. melta, melta blast? Yeah, the melta blast is an 18 inch range. And, and then, the fusion blasters are 18 inches as well. And then he'll assault move out. Yeah, anywhere. Uh, he's, from... a, he's a scaredy cat, so that's what he's going to do, right? Yeah. And you put him into, or you just stick him in cover, and he'll his stealth and shroud will give him a two up cover no matter what. Wait, wait, hold on. If it's if his cover is doubled, then he can be on the open. He's got a two up cover, does he not? Yes, but let's say they get within twelve inches. Oh, it has to be more than twelve inches for his cover to double. Okay. Stick him in forests or ruins, and he's got a two up cover save no matter what. Because it's at least five, right? Yeah, five up plus stealth plus shroud it goes down to two up. And it's specified that you can't get better than a two up cover. I'm glad we specified that because I know. I know, I know people would say, because there was that whole argument about one plus feel no pain for the one, uh, what was it? I think it was an Iron Hands guy or something. Where uh -huh. He has like a piece of warrior that's like plus one feel no pain. Mm -hmm. Then they have their army wide feel no pain. And then he has something else that was like a warlord trait that gives an extra feel no pain and it actually got all the way to one plus if you gave him the one endurance as well for uh -huh. biomancy. And people were saying, it never says that a one is an automatic failure. So he's got a one plus feel no pain. It was just like, oh come on. So you had to destroy your weapon him or insta kill him. So what is the what was the ruling on that? There um, was no FAQ. No, no FAQ came out, but I think everybody plays it the way it seems like the smartest that a one is still a failure because like what? Yeah. Because what will what will allow? There's only one exception to that. Is that there's an ethereal uh, Alan Va, I think it is that he gets a special save after he fails. That's based on the AP of the weapon. And if he rolls a die and it's equal to or greater than the AP of the weapon, then it ignores the wound. So, you can... so an AP1 weapon, and it actually specifies, yes, that means an AP1 weapon can't hurt him. Wait, hold on, hold on. It's just on him though, so it's not a big Wait, deal. He's getting... What? He, gets, he gets an extra save, like a feel no pain. It's not a feel no pain, but it's like a feel no pain based on the AP of the weapon. That an shot extra him. save, so if he fails his save. Which is nothing. Which he will fail it. Or he might have a cover save. Then he'll get another save. And so he is impossible to die? Well, if... It, possible to kill? Possible... <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah, like if it was an AP3 weapon, then if he rolls a 3+, plus, he ignores it. If it's an AP5 weapon, on a 5+, plus, he ignores it. So if you shoot him with Melta, you cannot you kill him. cannot hurt him. It actually specifies that. But it specifies <laughs> that. So people, some people were using that as an argument saying, see, there's some things where even a 1 doesn't automatically appeal. Oh, that's that's but this terrible. specifies that it goes to a maximum of two plus. So oh, thankfully, they didn't leave that because I know that would have been a huge debate. A uh -huh. Huge debate. Uh -huh. Now there's other one other rule that's going to really drive people crazy. What's that? That is the hollow photon countermeasures. So basically, they have a mini holodeck, like from Star Trek. Photon. So they can they can like all of a sudden make a little play in front of them that distracts whoever's it's, shooting at them. It's photon, not photon. That's not a word. So. Photon, yeah. yeah, like photons. Yeah. You know how like torpedoes, hol like holodeck and like maybe. holodeck and fo photon torpedoes, <laughs> and uh, evasive maneuvers. Well, like and, in Star uh, Trek, the holodeck works by using force fields around photons, and that's yeah. how it makes solid objects. Even though they're not really solid, it's just a force field, and then they use photons to make it look like something. Explain it, in Star Trek Insurrection. I followed that perfectly. <laughs> well, that's what they do. They make a little projection of your favorite play or movie, and it distracts the unit that was about to fire at them. It's actually kind of wise. And, and, they, and they, I know, right? That should be an Eldar thing, Eldar trick. Why don't, why, there's an episode of Star Trek Voyager where they use their holodeck projectors to make it look like there's other ships with them. Uh. And so the enemy fires at those ships. I'm like, why don't you always do that? Yeah, no kidding. And it's like used in one episode, but that's Star Trek for you. They'll find out something spectacular they can do and then you'll never see it again. Yeah, why don't they ever do that again? That's weird. But these guys have, it's only one use. <laughs> they only have the power to do it once. And then it drains it. Or, so, or it's like that Iron Man cartridge that he has to pop out afterwards. <laughs> Okay, hold on. I got so distracted by the, the holodeck. So, what exactly is that rule again? A unit, when an enemy unit targets them, yes. be, right before they roll to hit. Right you, before the unit rolls to hit. Yes, but okay. they have to have already targeted them. So, they were right. like, yes, I'm firing at them. Declaring, they yeah. They, they can't switch their targets. Okay. They can say, well, I'm going to use my hollow photon countermeasures. It's one use only in the entire game. Yep. And it forces that unit to snap fire. Oh, okay. So, it's actually really easy. So, you just made up this play thing. Yeah, no, yeah, they, they no. project a play in front of them yeah, and it distracts them and yeah, they snap fire. They're like, oh, it's such a cool play. And what would that music sound like? I don't know. It depends on the person who's watching it, what their favorite play is. Yeah. It's totally different. It could be Les Miserables for somebody. Yeah. It could be Fan uh, Phantom of the Opera for somebody who else. Who am I? Exactly. And that's totally going to distract them. <laughs> that's what it would be. They'd be like, who am I? So when the Grav Centurions all of a sudden get um, perfect timing cast on them, which ignores cover, 
and then they fire at this unit, the unit can basically say, sorry, no, and force them to snap fire. Isn't that kind of like a... Bait and switch? Yeah. Yeah, totally. But it's only one use only. So you're oh, it's only one use. It, it's a big, I think it's a big deal. Because if oh, it's just, a huge if deal. It just keeps them alive for one more turn. And that's one more turn of them killing stuff. Yeah, because their weapons are pretty good. But they got to be in range to do it, though. To do what? To kill stuff. Of course. Yeah. But they have the typical tower range, which is 18 to 24 inches. So long range, these guys are dead. Well, they got cover, but still. Yeah, that's just it. Unless they're shot with so cover how do you, ignoring so things. Here's a question for you. How would you kill them? We're going to do some who would wins, and we post on Facebook before this. Not, it's going to be too late by the time you watch this. We'll have already done it. Uh, the the matchups, but what do you think would be the perfect thing to counter these? Well, if I'm Space Marine, then drop pod assault would. With what? What would you put inside of it, though? Because even at close Flamers. range, what if they got a three up armor save? So you're gonna drop, and their toughness four. Well, three or up. Five, three up is what? Two and three chance, right? So. Yeah, but they have four wounds each. But you're covering these. You kill those dudes because you probably kill them first, right? Yeah, I would. I would try to as the not. Tau player, I would try to get It's the not tau player. Well, these things are only one wound each, right? Yeah. And they only four up saves. Mm. So Slanesh. Slanesh is cover ignoring. It does? So, yeah. Okay. Ignoring, obviously, anything that ignores cover is going to be, as long as it has the strength, will be good against these. Actually, hold on. Doom Sirens would be perfect because they're be strength five, AP three, cover ignoring. Really? Yeah. So just imagine. Like Mad Max style, because that's a Doom Siren. I picture like a massive guitar that just blasts awesome in your face. <laughs> so that would that would kill him. But that's in uh, one of the only things I could probably Heldrake. AP three flamers. Yeah, a torrent flamer no less. Yeah, so. I think that would be good, especially if once again you can take out these first, because once these are gone, which will be, I think that'll be hard to ensure, unless it's just one by himself. It won't be as hard. Yeah. Keep, I would still play so like this. It looks funny, but it makes it hard for you to take out both of them at the same time. You imagine like, zzz, zzz. It's like Magneto, right? <laughs> but um, I'm trying to think of what else. Destroyer weapons obviously could do the trick because if they roll a six, that ignores all your yeah, saves. Yeah, that's but true. that's still, as we found out in the previous Who Would Wins, not, not reliable. Not a reliable thing to count yeah. on. Yes. Even with massive numbers of destroyer shots. Close combat. I think that can do it. Yeah, but you gotta get in close combat. Yeah, and they do have Overwatch. Oh, interesting thing that, no, oh, never mind, it doesn't come into play, we do. They, they have the multi-tracker, which lets them fire an extra weapon. So they're monstrous creatures, so now they can fire three weapons, but they only have two, so not as interesting as I thought. So, that, yeah, that's. Oh, it would've been cool. It'd be like, hey, they can fire three weapons, but. <laughs> you can fire the extra weapon you don't have. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bait and switch. Yeah. But they do have the ignore type fighting That's what you can't. Server because of that. And their jetpacks too. Hey. Their main weapon. Yeah, it's magnetized. Yeah. Lee did a really good job on these. He got them tamed up nice and quick. We magnetized the two main weapons. Yeah. The torso weapons are harder to magnetize. They're a little more finicky. So we just put They're a little more filthy? What? Finicky. That's what I said. So the the main guns we have our fusion collider. Kaleidoscope. So it's 18 inch strength, 8 AP1. Blast, Melta. That's this guy. Oh, okay. Like Opposite. Yeah. And then we have the cyclic, cyclic Ion Raker. You can remember that one because it's like breaking your leaves. <laughs> and I think that is, there's Strength 7 AP4, and I think that is our anti aircraft weapon. The Strength 7 AP4, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they can take two support weapons, or two support systems, and one of those could be Velocity Tracker, which gives them Skyfire. So imagine three of these, mind you, 390 points plus the support systems. Hey. So you're looking at 400 something points. Oh, yeah. That's 18 shots. Hey, okay. How much? 300 and. Well, they're 100, 130 points each, so but then you're adding on. Um, you're going to want to swap it out for the twin link fusion blaster or burst cannon. So you're adding 5 or 10 points. The velocity tracker is actually one of the more expensive um, support systems. It's like, I think it's around 20 or 30 points. So that's per, per guy. So you're close to 500. Like you're 450, 500. That's a good chunk. So but I don't uh, think you're gonna see these running threes very often. How much was that unit? The the first one we did, not the big dude, not the Forge World, but the first guy. The artillery guy. Yeah. Three hundred and sixty. He was so. One of those. Give and... him Skyfire. I think he's gonna do better than these guys. Oh, absolutely. And mind you, there's only strength five in his case. Well, he's got the four strength ADP one missiles, but they're one use only. But um, I think it's just the mass number of shots that he has that'll make the difference. Mm -hmm. And he can fire them twice if he's anchored. 
He so. can, yes. What's so I'm, try I'm trying to think what would the real use of these guys be. Like obviously fusion, fusion, that screaming anti-vehicle. So you're thinking vehicle versus infantry, which one is better, right, for these guys? Well, if I was if I was going against infantry, I'd have burst cannon, cyclic ion raker. But how do you know what you're going against, right? Well, you, when you're building your list, you build some anti-armor and some anti-infantry. So right? what should be the number one thing that you would put on these guys? If I didn't know what I was up against, or if like what I would treat them as, I think. See, this is where it's hard because I'm not super impressed by their weaponry. Like, I'm glad that it's a blast because then I don't have to worry about their bad ballistic skill of three. <laughs> I know, it's so bad, right? It's like 50 50 chance. It sucks. I, I know, and they're only single shot weapons. I hate, I hate single shot weapons, period. Yeah? Never mind when I have to roll them on a four plus. I think if I didn't know what I was up against, if I didn't know like which army in general, or if I was going against heavy armor or heavy infantry, I think I would lean towards double fusion. Double fusion. And fusion is the strength ADB one? Yeah. And the one on top is just twin link single shot. So who cares about the low ballistic skill because it's twin link and the other one's a blast. So who cares about its ballistic skill? So you don't have to have it supported by mm. marker lights as much, except mm. maybe to ignore cover. Um, that seems to be what I would do. So just a bunch of meltas. But for 130 points, you're just getting two melta shots. Sure, it's survivable. And it's 18 inches, right? Yeah. And you can blast with it? Well, this one's blast. This one's twin link single shot. But I st it doesn't seem like it's worth it, does it? It's, it's still it's very survivable. So it's going. To, I think it's going to be. I think for me, these seem to be like um, uh, thunderfire cannons. Not in the sense that they're they're roll, but that they're kind of they'll do their job. Right. They'll, they'll be reliable. Yeah. You can't kill them easily, and they've got half decent weaponry. Um, but nothing, I don't find them super impressive other than that. Like you can swap it out for the, if you're gonna do the cyclic iron raker, definitely burst cannon, because then you're doing lots of strength seven shots and then a bunch of strength five. Mm -hmm. That seems like anti-infantry to me. Mm -hmm. But still the Tau, for 130 points, I could bring a unit of Tau fire warriors and they have 30 inch strength five AP five. And then it becomes rapid fire at 15 inch. And that seems to me to be a better anti-infantry, especially once you have an ethereal boosting them. I know they're, they're not as survivable. Right. But, and they're not as maneuverable. So that's kind of what you're paying for, it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're survivable, it sounds like. Two-up cover save is survivable. Yeah, and being toughness five, monstrous creature. Mm -hmm. With four wounds. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 12 wounds you gotta chew through, plus all those, which is an additional six. Like, even in close combat, they're not horrible. They got three attacks, they're strength six, they're monstrous creatures, so they're AP two. Mm -hmm. So that weapon makes, skill too, though. Yeah, they've got the bad Tau weapon skill. So against anything that's good in close combat, they're going to be hitting on fives. It's but it's just at least they're not useless in close combat. They, oh. they, they can take it. Drones are faster than them. Initiative six or initiative four. Yeah, drones are typically faster, but they're also strength three, only one attack. Yeah. So they're not. You know, they're there more just to provide the support of whatever they do. You know, that's a good question. Well, we'll have to test it out. Yeah. So we're going to do some Who Would Wins to see. We'll pit, we'll pit them up against some stuff that was suggested by viewers and also ones that we want to do. Obviously, we'll try some vehicles. We'll try infantry and kind of see where, what role they can take on. We'll try things that seem to be made to destroy these guys, and we'll also try things that these seem to be made to destroy. And we'll see how they, in a, in a vacuum, how they stack up against other stuff. And uh, he can use his cyclic ion cannon raker to rake up the dead bodies of his brethren because they will die because the, they were... If were... he's still alive, then, I, then he won. Well, only one. And then he'll die. Okay, so he can rake them up. He's, he's going to rake, he, rake up himself. He's self-serving like that. That's what we have the extra arms for. <laughs> so that's next. Let's do the Who Would Wins. So that, of course, is for our vault members at the link in the video description below. And if you're not a vault member, you can still click it, get a free seven-day trial to the vault which will give you access to that Who Would Win instantly, as well as all the previous ones that we did for the previous Tau reviews and thousands of other battle reports, painting tutorials, behind the scenes, narrative campaigns, and lots of other stuff too. And it helps support us to be able to do this. It does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more Tau reviews. Go watch the Who Would Win and happy working.